Hello, in this video I'll teach you my approach to character animation in Blender. Note, I'm not sure if it's the industry way, but this is the way that I've been animating based on what I've learned from a number of video tutorials and websites. If you're an aspiring animator just starting out, you will learn a lot from this video. Hopefully. If not, then that's my fault I guess for not explaining properly. And even though I use Blender, anyone from any 3D software can follow along. The one I learned from the most was Keith Lango's Organized Keyframe Tutorial. It was a bit of an eye-opener for me in terms of realizing how to bring my characters to life and make them more lively compared to the robotic, dull, unrealistic animations I created before. I highly suggest you check out his website as well, as you will learn heaps from it. That's the link to his website. Throughout this series, I'll mostly be using the Organized Keyframe Tutorial to create my animations. Little disclaimer, I'm not a professional animator by any means, just a self-taught one, which I've been doing for four years, uh, alone, and w wondering why Pixar hasn't seen me yet. But I am learning new tips and tricks after every animation I do. However, if you do prefer to learn character animation professionally using the Pixar standard, I highly advise you to go for one of those paid courses like Animation Mentor or something. I also wish to do a course like this, but for that price, I will have to wait until I get a proper stable income. But enough about my sad story. Here are the basic steps to animate characters in Blender. First, references. I'll assume you have your story, scripts, storyboards all laid out and you're just staring blankly at your T-Pose character rig thinking, hmm, should I just start animating this, this thing? Something that will help is references. You will need references of how you will go about animating that particular shot or scene. References can come in many forms. You could capture a video of yourself enacting that shot. Multiple angles would actually be better. You could download YouTube clips of the action you're looking for. You can also draw sketches of your character's main poses at different times. Drawing poses helps you better understand how you will pose your character when it's time to animate. I personally use a combination of video recording myself and drawing sketches of poses. More specifically, the more impossible poses that I couldn't video record due to the unflexibility of my body. Unflexibility? Unflex, I'm not sure if that's the word. Anyways, next we start with the posing and timing phase. Here we block out the main poses of the character. Just the most important poses we know will happen and at the exact time we know will happen. For example, take your stereotypical character who walks along a street and trips over a banana. The main poses you would create would be the beginning of the walk pose perhaps the point where he steps on the banana, the pose of him tripping over uh, and falling over, and a final pose where he's just landing. You would of course time those accordingly. Uh, in Blender, you need to make sure when you pose that all the character's body parts are keyframed accordingly, even if they do nothing. In the Dope Sheet Editor, you should see all your keyframes organized in a nice straight line. This makes modification easy, since if you need to change a certain pose, you can do so without having to delete and reanimate keyframes. Secondly, timing is important. Really important. If you have background sounds, such as the sound of footsteps, the timing process is a little easier in Blender since you can load the sound in Blender and pose the steps at the correct frame as it matches the sound. If you don't have background sounds, it's better just to use reference video loaded in a little window to the left or right just to get the timing right. Remember. Both believable poses and correct timing contribute a lot to realistic and believable character animation. And I mean a lot. This stage pretty much covers the pose-to-pose -pose method of animation from that 12 principles of character animation. Once you've completed the main poses, you then just go in and do another pass. What that means is, with the main poses you already have, if you play them back, it will look really blocky and lacks detail. A bit like using Skype on dial-up internet. By adding more poses between the main poses, you add more detail to your animation. Things like moving holds, transitions, arcs, breakdowns, and stuff like that come into play. You can also shove in some of them 12 principles of character animation in here somewhere. You'll still need to make sure your poses are organized nicely in a straight line during this pass. After that, you can go ahead and do more and more passes if you like, if you want to get more of that detail. After you complete your passes, made your modifications, and happy with the overall look of your character animations, it's time to make it look, well, alive. We need to make it look more organic. Since the truth about organized keyframes or pose-to-pose, -pose, 
is that it just looks dull and robotic when played back, even though technically speaking it is realistic. The key shuffling phase involves going in and creating chaos by messing up and moving and offsetting keys, making sure the entire body doesn't land the pose at the same time. By offsetting the time for each part of the body, you create a more organic and random feel for the animation. And this is a good thing, since our real life movements are organic and very random. If it weren't, you would question our humanness. Again, I'm not sure if humanness is a word. Anyways, as Keith Lango put it, we start with organized structure at the beginning and transform it to disorganized life at the end. Making modifications at this stage it will be more painful, which is why you need to make sure any modifications will need to happen at the earlier stages before you commit to key shuffling. The last phase is polishing. Now I have to admit something, I don't really follow this. I've only used it briefly for walk cycles, but I don't actually follow this phase at all in my work. And the truth is I should. With F-curves, you look at a screen with a lot of confusing curves and tangled wires. Your job is to nudge and twist those wires to make sure your character is moving more smoothly. The more time you spend on F-curves, the higher your chance of getting an Oscar for Best Character Animator Ever. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot. Please like, share, subscribe and drop in a comment for suggestions or just things you didn't understand in this video. I'll try my best to help. In the next video, we'll start with a simple walk cycle applying these principles. Thank you for watching.